welcome to the Make Life Fun Show. I'm your host, Josie Wheatman, and I am so excited that you're here. I have graduated the mom game. I have been in it now for almost a year. Can you believe it? Everett is walking. Wow, it's a whole new game. Through the last 25 episodes, I have learned so much and I have grown in my craft. I have grown as a mom. And the biggest thing I've learned is just love, 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 taking it in, giving it out, love, and being in the present moment with my son and continuously just giving him my regulated self as often as I can. And that is what's changing the game in motherhood. That is what's breaking my generation of parenting. If you are new to listening, you are in for a treat. Hello, family. Welcome back to the Make Life Fun Show. I am so excited to have you back with us. And we are welcoming today Ellis Anakin on the podcast of the Make Life Fun Show. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yes. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Please tell us about you. You're not at all the things. Thank you. Hello, family. I'm so happy to be here. I'm looking forward to, you know, connecting with everyone here. My name is Ellis. I am a mother of a little girl. Her name is Daisy. Her, she will be two in July. I am a business owner. I own a virtual preschool subscription company called Newsphere. We have a couple of different programs going on and things that, you know, we're going to talk about later in this episode, but man, how to keep life fun. Lots of stuff, right? She, my two-year-old certainly, or almost two, certainly keeps life very fun and engaging. (laughs) Yes. They have a tendency to do that, don't they? (laughs) Uh, they, She keeps me on my toes for sure. For sure. (laughs) Yes. So yes, you're talking about the preschool and being a mom. I would love to know the preschool. Why is it so important at that age for kids to be engaged in that preschool? Yeah. So, I mean, I feel there's multiple ways, but multiple levels of importance. The socialization aspect I think is, is key. Preschool, whether it be in person or virtual is a very social aspect. And that age group of, you know, the two through six years of age really needs that socialization that occurs when you're having share time and what's your weather today Mm -hmm. and things like that. And a lot of people I know a virtual preschool. What? How does that even work? And now with the age of technology, I mean, listen, it works. The kids are engaged. They're talking to each other. They're looking for each other on the screen. That's a Mm -hmm. small group. We don't have any more than eight students per group. And Mm -hmm. it's always the same instructor and it's always the same kids. So that socialization when they're going, you know, to class every day, right at the same time, let's talk about routines. You and I could talk about routines forever (laughs) and ever, right? Like this is what we do this. This is when we do this, but that, you know, they, they log into their class. They see their friends. They're excited to interact. They're learning, you know, raising their hands, things Mm -hmm. like that. All the things that you can have in an in-person preschool can also be on that virtual aspect. And then of course, I feel like your family already knows, but then you've got your calendar, your weather, your foundation skills, your focus activities, Mm -hmm. the let's learn time on top of just that. Hey, I'm so happy to see everyone. Right. So you're engaging and socializing and learning at the same time. And I love that you brought up that time management piece, because I think that one is huge for moms. And I know you were saying before we started recording about how that 50 minutes that mom can use that time for themselves. And that is so important in itself. We're a small business, right? (laughs) So I reach out, connect with all of our families a lot, and I'm always constantly reaching out. And someone just told me the other day, the 50 minutes that they get uninterrupted to answer their emails, Mm. build a little side business, whatever they have going on. This woman particularly was doing that, knowing then that her little one is engaged in a platform that's safe, Mm -hmm. engaging, educational, and limited interruptions, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you write the same, I don't, I don't know if you've been here, but I've written the same email sentence a couple of times <laughs> and I keep getting interrupted and it takes me, I don't know, a full hour to write one email, but yeah, that productivity, that time management piece you're getting in there as a mom myself. Like I know at 10 o'clock I'm doing this, you set people up, you do that. And it helps with the schedule of the child too. They know yeah. they look forward to it. And there's not a struggle to do the next thing. Let's set this up. Let's get going. And then, man, what moms can do in 50 minutes, um, (laughs) run a marathon, do the laundry and the dishes, 
and do some emails and do your housekeeping and then this and then, oh, okay. Wow. That was a great 50 minutes. Well, particularly, yeah, that's been the feedback and it has been, it just makes my mommy heart sore. When I do yes. That. Yes. Cause yeah. When you have that set focus of that 50 minutes, it goes by so fast, but you can get so much done because it's a set focus and you're not getting that interruption that you would normally get. <laughs> like you were saying earlier, I know for some moms out there that look at that time management piece is how this is impossible. Do you have something to speak to the heart of that mom, that, that time management piece? Cause I know that for us in this community, that is the one thing I hear a lot from moms is how are you doing it all? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I don't know yet yeah, to kind of go more into it. Yeah. Doing it all, like knowing what for me personally, mm-hmm. right. Like, like knowing what I'm going to do in the next hour, writing my task looks, getting it done, checking it off, but then knowing that I'm going to have it uninterrupted mm-hmm. just absolutely is a game changer. And it just for me and some of the people that I've talked to in the past, when you know what you're going to do with that 50 minutes, it just, you end up sitting there at the end with five extra minutes going, Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, let me, I don't know, drink a cup of coffee then real quick and get everything done. So yeah. Yeah, absolutely. As far as tools that mom can do for their education, because education is huge for you. You say that's like a passion of yours and you've been in the industry, in the education industry for a long time. So for that education piece for moms at home that are working with their three to four or three to six year old, what are some tools that you can give them for working with their preschoolers at home? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. So the tools that we send home at home resources Mm -hmm. every Friday to continue the learning. So those tools are, you know, instrumental because we're thematic curriculum Mm -hmm. as well. So the kids are excited about learning and this is a silly example, but bugs, right? You know, Oh, bugs, right. And then you don't have to go searching for on Pinterest for extra things to learn about bugs, right? The instructors are sending those things home for the moms to pull out very easily and do, which is, I've heard fantastic on just time management piece too. And like not having to think, right. Oh, what am I going to do? Let me pull up that email from miss, miss newsphere. I'll say miss newsphere. And they're all there at home packets, everything like that to just continue the learning and giving more resources to moms, you know, to, to help their little one at home. Mm-hmm. Additionally, this isn't on our website, but it's very much available. So all moms have, and dads or parents, right, have email access to all the instructors. So if you're wondering what to do, or how's my little one doing, or mm-hmm. can I have your professional opinion, or what else can I do individually for my child? you've got a direct communication to that instructor that they're able to give the tons of resources individualized to the child, you know, from their, from their professional opinion as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for sharing that. Well, I would love to shift a little bit and talk about you, Ellis, and talk about you and your mom journey, what that has looked like becoming a mom and how are you personally managing your time and how are you personally having fun in motherhood? (laughs) You know, I'll just be very vulnerable and real, right? Like I, I feel like everyone listening, you know, has probably had same similar feelings to my one. I did not know (laughs) when I first became a mom, what, I mean, you think, you know, Mm -hmm. right. You read, you watch other people do it. You're like, I can't, you know, you're so in love with your partner and just, we are ready to, you know, make the world a more Mm -hmm. beautiful place. And I'm going to bring this child in and, 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 you know, raise them to, to honestly, that's, that's my goal, making the world a better Mm -hmm. place. And so raising a child and hopefully if I'm blessed children to just make a small difference, right? That's mm-hmm. what I'm trying to do in my company, what we're trying to do in my life. And my journey as a mom, you know, has evolved being, being vulnerable. Like I, I was not, I thought I was ready. It was tough in the beginning, trying to figure it all out. I, I feel like I might've lost just a little bit of myself. And now I'm finally doing this part with, with, you know, a business and having this coming back and kind of coming back to myself, you know, as I said in the beginning, it's been two years. And so I'm finally feeling a little bit more like myself, I think, <laughs> but I spent a lot of time, you know, you lose yourself a little bit. I feel anyway, that's my journey. I felt like everything I'm, you know, and you constantly do is for your child. And you're like, wait a minute, what about me? Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, and 
I'm here now, you know, doing the small things and, you know, it's a, they're buzzwords, right? Self-care and this and the, but I love, you know, I, I'm getting back to that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. So, you know, keeping life fun for me looks like being outdoors, mm-hmm. reading a book, having some tea and having just connect, like uh, really trying to be very, very present with her has made, has made a world of difference mm-hmm. where I've come. So yes. Beautiful. Like you were just talking about how I think it starts for almost all of us. We think we've got it all figured out. And then we're like, oh my gosh, there's this person here now. <laughs> listen, so it's funny because I, you know, like I've talked about earlier, like, oh, and I'm like when 10 a.m. rolls around, I'm gonna be super duper productive. And so that's me like before a mom, and then you come and this beautiful, beautiful soul is is yours, right? Mm-hmm. And my goodness, does the schedule all get all wacky and you know part of my journey has just been being able to let go of some of that type a like okay if it doesn't happen at 10 o'clock it's okay it happens at 10 15 everyone's gonna survive and she, like including myself right and so letting go of that and it honestly in the past six months or so has made such a difference you know from for me and my mental health and just knowing to let go of that a little bit and it's okay and she is loved and that's what she needs right now if she needed a little this or that, the rest of it can wait for a second. And that's what I really strive to continue to, to do. So yes. and moms need to hear this. They need to hear this version spoken out loud because it's all of us. We're all in this mom game together and knowing that we're going to have these schedules, but yet we have to be flexible because the priority is that little person who is, who's needing us, right? Yes. The priority, the priority is <laughs> Yes. And coming back to, they need us and it's okay. That five minutes is okay. You know, it's not going to crumble my world in the beginning. I thought it would, Mm -hmm. I tried very hard to control it. We breastfed. And so it was like, you know, three, six, nine, every three hours, we're going to do this. And oh my God. And I drove myself insane. It was so, it wasn't, it was not enjoyable. And when I finally was like, it's okay. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to do that. One of the things I did do for that, I mean, I, so we started out breastfeeding and fed is breast fed is best. I should say that's it. That's the end of, that's the end of that. But what I did is I, I actually exclusively pumped and that's all mm-hmm. I, instead of it, because it helped with my personality. And mm-hmm. so when I did that, you know, the schedule, and then of course, as everyone knows, and as all moms on the thing, you're like, Oh, I've got this great schedule down. And then the child changes. So I was feeling like a superstar. I'm like, I'm going to exclusively pump and we're going to be on this great schedule. And then (laughs) two weeks later, something changed on her schedule. And so that has been my journey, constantly trying to figure out a schedule. And then just recently being like, you know what? her happiness and her priority. And that's, and that's it. And letting go a little bit about, about that. And that's part of me wishes that I would have done that in the beginning, but that's part of the journey. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. And it's okay. Yes. And by you speaking about it right now, like I'm getting chills up my spine because this is so relatable. This is so honest and vulnerable. And thank you from my bottom of my heart for sharing it because the moms that are listening to this, they do, they feel like that superwoman and we have to keep it all together. We have to keep all the balls in the air and we have to make the schedule and do all the things. And that's what we see on social media Mm -hmm. (laughs) is moms that are doing that. And so this is why I created this. This is why we're having this conversation is because that's just the highlight reel. We have to get real (laughs) and honest and know that we are doing the best we can and you are doing the best you can mama and you're sharing your story that's fun to help somebody else to give themselves permission to let go yeah you said it brilliantly juggling all the things right juggling all the balls and somewhere along the way I read this like there's the glass balls and I'm sure people have read this but it really resonated with me there are the glass balls that you throw up in the air and there are the plastic balls Mm. right and the plastic balls can drop because Mm. they are not going to break so as long as you keep your glass balls up at the oh. air, that's all. So I read that somewhere along the, along the way here in the past two years. And that's when I started to be like, okay, that's fine. You know, that's fine. I glass love ball, that visual. Is it a glass ball or is it a plastic ball? Mm. In your life, in your business, in your being a mother, is it a plastic ball, which would drop and everything would be fine mm. or would it be a glass ball. So some yeah. glass balls and you only have a few glass balls. There's only two or three of them happy, healthy kid, happy, healthy partner. 
I think that's about it. I'm not <laughs> really sure if there's happy, any healthy mom. Healthy yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like three balls. yes. Those plastic balls are just noise and you can let them drop and they'll bounce up. And some of them might even bounce up and you can catch them again. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe oh, they're rubber I balls. I love that. Oh, yeah, they're rubber balls because then you drop them. Eventually they're bumped back up and you can catch them again. Yes, I love that visual so much because it speaks to the core of the importance of what we make important and what we remember as important. Yes. yes. And I, I read it somewhere. I cannot remember who it was. I'm sure she or he is brilliant. Uh, <laughs> but that spoke to me and I was like, you know, I'm, a, I'm not, a, I can't juggle all the things all the time. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So what was your journey like then from being this mom who is managing her time, walking the walk, <laughs> doing all the things and then to start this preschool and do this business as a mom because I know a lot of our listeners as well are have that entrepreneur spirit and they're looking at themselves in the mirror and like I'm not just a mom I have more to do more to give I, I want to make the world a better place yeah absolutely so my journey is definitely unique I am not the founder of the company but I am the owner and CEO Ooh. so yeah so I it was a it was an interesting unique situation which I maybe the universe just mm-hmm. spoke to me right the universe is like this became part of my journey when it came around juggling having a business and a child being an entrepreneur all of those things. I'm like thinking about the journey and I'm, I'm almost having a hard time, you know, describing it besides that it being unique. <laughs> and for the entrepreneurs and the moms listening out there, don't give up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Stick to what you're passionate about. I'm passionate about early education. It certainly is hard work, right? But if it's right, everything's going to fall into place. Doing consistent, consistently, I think would be one of the main words that are just popping into my head. Consistently showing up, consistently working on your business, product, being productive in your business. And that could just be doing one thing. Mm -hmm. Right. And that feels very little, but it's certainly significant, especially when you're starting out. And so when I'm doing all the small little things in early education before, I really think it just led to this big thing, which is what I'm doing now. And so staying consistent with the time that you have and being present, Mm -hmm. you know, with your family. Yes. I love that. And I love that you said it was unique (laughs) when you were ready. It seems like it just kind of fell in your lap. Is that what? No, yes. And so, oh, and I, I even like am chuckling, right? Because you hear those things happen, but I, I, I never thought it would happen to me. And then it did. And so I'm saying, I guess, keep doing the right things and keep doing the small things every day with, with whatever you're passionate about, moms, like just keep doing it showing up as yourself, showing Mm -hmm. up authentically for your children, for your business. Maybe the business is just an idea, but as long as you think about the idea every day, you know, it's going to happen. And I know that sounds so cliche, but I'm sitting here saying it to everyone listening. It happened to me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, beautiful. Yes. When we open ourselves up for that magic to sort of happen in our lives, like you said, it's by being in your zone of genius, by doing the things that matter most to you, by, again, that priority of doing little things, baby steps and getting you to the big, big picture. And so I love that. And I celebrate you for the moves that you're making. And I love that early education is something that you're so passionate about because our kids are our future. I mean, our children are our future. They're the foundation of the world. And, you know, I'm just thankful that, you know, my small business can provide a small foundation, Mm -hmm. right? For them at home, in the comfort of their home, at their kitchen table, Mm -hmm. while moms are maybe working on their business too, and just trying to make the world a better place. Mm -hmm. Early education is so important. And so whatever that might look like for your listeners, children, it's important. Mm -hmm. Socialization, letter recognition. I mean, all of it, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. So early education, how did you get into that field for yourself? So I've always wanted to be a teacher, an educator of some sort. Again, I'm very, I'm full of unique journeys here. (laughs) Um, And, you know, since it's a very vulnerable podcast, I will just say it, say it out loud. I I went to business school first. Mm -hmm. 
and I got a, you know, a degree in business and I was like, I'm going to go be business lady. (laughs) I don't even know what like business lady. I mean, what is that? Is that a title? Like I was just, I'm going to go do this. And I had this thought in my head, you know, as you're 18 year old, you know, taking over the world. Mm -hmm. And I got into business. I'm like, man, this is horrible. I don't like this anymore. Like, this is so bad. I want to, you know, and I've always loved working with kids and I've always loved watching their minds work. And so I went back to school to be a teacher. Mm. Oh, yes. And so it was just, I've always wanted to make a little difference. And mm-hmm. I always thought that children were the children are the way to do it. <laughs> like mm-hmm. systems and everything, just the, the children, they're just so they're new. Mm just so new. So I went (laughs) back to be an educator. And so I worked in early ed as a teacher. And then lo and behold, my business degree came back and I was a preschool director. So then I was in business again, (laughs) but business and education, I chuckle when that happens because I never wanted anything to do with business and rawr. And then I'm like, Oh, you want me to run a school? That's great. I would love to do that. That's, you know, and then you're back in business again and doing that. And then as everyone knows what 2020 happened. And so then that brought me to new sphere as a, you know, early education, also business, but then in my home. And at that point, I just got that, the entrepreneurial, the, the, the bite, mm-hmm. I got the bite and I will never go back. And I worked for new sphere. And then, then the opportunity of owning new sphere came up. Mm-hmm. So then there's the full story. The full story. <laughs> yes. The what full a beautiful story. ride. It was bumpy, but you know what? I wouldn't change it for the world. Everyone hears things like that. Take every little step every day. It's a blessing. I mean, you're alive. It's not always easy, but it's certainly worth it. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. That one's going to be a quote. It's not always easy, but it is always so worth it. Especially when you get to look back. Yep. And all the lessons that you've learned while you're going through lessons, you always think, well, we're going through lessons. You don't know it's a lesson. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what am I talking about? You don't know what you're doing. And you're like, and you look back and you're like, man, I learned a lot. Mm-hmm. Right. Like if I could tell my 20 year old self, don't go to business school. I don't know what I tell her mm-hmm. because here I am owning a company being in business, you know, an embarrassing amount of time later, no age disclosure here, but, uh, you know, you just, uh, (laughs) yeah. Would I tell her to not go into business? Well, probably not. Oh, I love that. That just gave me chills up my spine because we think sometimes that we have taken a wrong turn and we're thinking if I could go back, I would do it differently. But if we did it differently, would we be where we are today? (laughs) Would you, would you tell her not to do that? Because man, did I learn a lot? Like I did, you know, I, I learned how to look at a profit and loss statement. Mm. I looked how, you know, and now I'm using Mm. that years later. Yeah. So I don't know if you're going through something hard, mama's just, there's gotta be a silver lining in it somewhere. And yes, I love that you brought that up because it does seem like we'll have as moms, especially in our day, we'll have the really highs and then we'll have the lows and we'll beat ourselves up. And so what you're saying and how you're speaking to our souls right now is so needed in this journey, this mom journey It's needed every day. And that encouragement that you're bringing with your story and your vulnerability is so important. And I admire it. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you. And then you said it and a thought came into my head, you know, oh, you know, ups and downs throughout the day. How many silver linings do we have throughout the day? Like the morning was this and then something else happened and then this happened. And did I do that right? Did I feed my, you know, like, did I do that part right? Did I get frustrated too quickly? Did I, mm. did I listen enough to her? Did I get on her level enough? Is she, and some days I'm like, can't wait for bedtime. Then she's in bedtime and I'm like, oh my God, I miss her so much. And then you're like, <laughs> and you're that, how many silver linings throughout my day? You know, I'm, I'm certainly very rich because I'm lots of silver lining. Stock up all the silver linings through my day. Yeah. Yep. It goes back to that gratitude piece of finding yep. the good and focusing on that good. And like you said earlier, it comes back to juggling those balls and the glass yep. balls in the air. So glass balls, plastic balls, rubber balls that could bounce back up in a couple of days later. And I'm going to let that drop. And I'm going to come back to that one. And that plastic ball is going to sit there for a while and I can pick it up when I have time. Mm, so. yes. the permission that we need mom yes I heard it here on <laughs> make life fun take it run right. with it <laughs> ellis i'm so appreciative of you and your time today i would love for you to tell our listeners where they can connect with you where they can support you how they can 
join you in New Sphere. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. And for all the listeners, I would absolutely love for you to check out my website. It is www.newsphere.com. We always offer free trials for anyone that's thinking, I don't know if my kid can do it. Come on down, talk to me, have a free trial. Mm -hmm. We have three separate programs, ages two through six to find the right one for you. Come meet my amazing instructors. Mm -hmm. They're fantastic. And moms themselves just Mm -hmm. working from home. So feel free to always reach out to me on the website. And there's obviously emails there, scheduling chats, things like that. Wonderful. And I always ask, I give you the floor. I always ask if you have anything else on your heart after having this heartwarming conversation to share with our mamas that are listening. Yeah, you have the floor. Thank you. And (laughs) to all the mamas that are listening, you know, be easy on yourself. Mm -hmm. Give yourself some grace today. Maybe you don't need grace today. Maybe you need grace tomorrow. You don't have to juggle everything. Sometimes the balls drop and that's okay. Just make sure the ones that are plastic, keep the glass ones up. But I'm thankful for every single woman and every single mama that I've ever came across because we're doing it. Mm -hmm. Forever thankful for all those relationships and for all the future relationships as well. Ellis, thank you for being a guest. Thank you for being you. (laughs) We celebrate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to the Make Life Fun Show. I hope you enjoyed yourself and got a little, little gems, little pieces of gold that you are taking to heart, that you are not just listening, but you're going to do something about it. I want you to be fired up. So yes, so we come once a week, come back, listen to us here. We are an all podcast places you listen. We are also on YouTube. If you like to watch the show at Josie Wheatman, you can find us at Make Life Fun. And I am so stoked. And also come follow me, come play with me on Instagram at Josie Wheatman. I am dancing. I am showing my sweet baby (laughs) and we're just having a ball. We're making life fun. And so come hang out with us and thank you again for listening. Please subscribe to the show follow us, leave us a review because the more you love up on me, other people can find the show and love up on us. And we build this community that is one of love and goodness. Also, I am taking clients. I'm taking one-on-one coaching clients. Like I said, we're talking about Bloom. We have a membership coming up and all the beautiful things. So there is a few ways that you can connect with me on that. So we have my website, which is backrosecoaching.com. You can go on there as well as you can join the mail list. So right now I have a 21 day raise your vibration challenge going on. It's an email challenge completely offhand. You wake up every day and you get these tidbits of goodness that light you up. So why not? It's a 21 day high vibration challenge. It's tools. It's simple. It doesn't require much. Most of them, if you want a little taste, is placing your hand on your heart and telling yourself you love yourself today. So yes, so come hang out with me. Jump into my world. I've got you.